Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And in this episode, I'm going to be grading Sony's E3 2018 performance. And I didn't do this video immediately after watching the Sony presentation because I feel like I would have been a little bit overly negative about it. I wanted to take the night to sleep on this and think more about it. And I actually watched the presentation again this morning when I woke up just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. And at the end of the day, I've concluded that while some of the games shown were extremely exciting and well presented, the overall pacing of their conference was a complete train wreck. Smash! JT. And I'll follow this up in a future video, but something I wanted to touch on right now is how grading a performance at E3 is so challenging to do. Do you grade it based off of the games they presented, how well they were able to surprise you, how well they were able to pace their conference and excite you and draw you in with all these extracurricular things that have nothing to do with the games themselves? It all depends on the angle you look at it. And for this video and how I'm going to be grading Sony's conference, I'm going to just be looking at the games because if I were to look at the actual conference itself, this would be an extremely negative video. And with that out of the way, let me start talking about some of the games that got me excited. If you were to tell me that an open world samurai game would get me on my feet when I was watching this conference, I'd have said you were crazy. But then I saw Ghost of Tushimi? Tushami? Tushima? Ghost of Tushima? I don't really know how to say it, but regardless, this game looks absolutely incredible. The lighting, the shadows, the graphics, the gameplay, how it all flowed together. I didn't know anything about this game. They never announced anything going into the conference. So not only was I completely surprised by it, but after watching the trailer, I'm actually excited to play it. The only thing is, when are we actually going to be able to get our hands on it? A common running theme from what it seems like every game this year at E3. Most of these games aren't coming out until 2019 or beyond, and that's extremely frustrating. I get it's E3, it's a trade show, they have to talk about what's down the pipeline, but it's a little bit frustrating that all these games I'm actually excited about aren't coming out for a very long time. Next up we got Control that looked like a ton of fun. This is made from the same people that made the Alan Wake series and Max Payne, and it looks like an incredible experience. But again, I want to see more of it before I can make a full decision on what I feel about it. But so far it's off to a great start. Unlike how the conference got going with Last of Us 2 and that awkward dance scene and how it just seemed to drag on forever and ever. But again, I'm not going to focus on how bad the pacing of this conference was. Last of Us 2 is coming. I'm excited about that as well. I just wish they presented it a little bit better to the end viewer. But outside of that, yes, Last of Us 2 looks really good as well. The thing that saved this entire conference for me, let's be honest, they announced a Resident Evil 2 remake or redo or remaster. I don't know what they're going to do with Resident Evil 2. But looking at the graphics and looking how they've remade this game from the ground up, holy crap guys, Resident Evil 2 is one of the best Resident Evil games ever made. And I knew going into this conference that there were rumors that it was going to be happening, but there are rumors of a lot of stuff that never comes to fruition. So I had my hopes a little bit tempered saying, if they actually announce this, I'll be completely blown out of my seat. And sure enough, they announced it and holy crap. This was the one saving grace from the entire Sony E3 2018 press conference, in my mind. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to hear that and say, what the hell are you talking about? The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding, all these awesome games they announced, a new Spider-Man, they, they gave us gameplay of that. Look, I'll be honest with you, watching the Spider-Man gameplay, it actually made me not excited about the game, and I'll tell you why. Because going into this conference, I was ecstatic about the new Spider-Man game. I thought this was going to be the next big hitter from Sony, especially after seeing the cinematics from it last year's E3. And then seeing the actual gameplay at this year's E3, it looks like a Batman Arkham Asylum reskin. The same type of fighting, except now you can sling webs instead of throw a hook shot like Batman did. And that's a little bit disappointing. Yes, I'm still going to play the game. Yes, I'm still going to love the game. But I wish they could have been a little bit more original. All the fighting looks like the same exact type of fighting from the Batman Arkham Asylum style of fighting. And the quick time events and everything they threw in with that... I'm like, this is just Batman with a reskin of Spider-Man on top of it. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad game, mind you. It just, I wish they were more original with it. They also had a trailer for Neo 2 and announced that. And it looked really fun, 
But this is coming from someone who hasn't played the original Neo, and I know everyone loves that game, and I know I gotta get into it, but it was hard for me to get excited about the sequel when I hadn't played the original yet. So I don't blame Sony for that one, that one's on me. The other thing I was disappointed about was the lack of PSVR games. This is something that I thought Sony was going to really push heavily this year. I thought they were going to focus on one major big game made from Sony coming to the PSVR. Something they could point to as the flagship game for the system. And they didn't really have that. In fact, I only recall one game that actually took full advantage of the PSVR being shown off at their E3. And it's coming from From Software, one of my favorite developers in the entire video game industry. So that got me very pumped. Deracini, Deracine, I, I'm not really sure how to say it, but I'm extremely excited about it. But again, it's one of those games, I wish they showed more information on it because I don't even know what I'm getting excited about. It's just, here's a game, here's a quick cutscene, and perk your interest and it's over and I wish they spent a little bit more time gave us a little bit more and gave us some details surrounding the release of it which again is a common theme running through a lot of the conferences out there they also showed a game called Trover Saves the Universe from the creator of the Rick and Morty series and this game's gonna be for PS4 and the PSVR and how the style was and the comedy and things like that was right up my alley. That's actually one of the few games that Sony talked about that I definitely plan on getting day one. They also gave us a different look of Kingdom Hearts 3 showing Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean? I never figured that out and whenever I hear it I still forget how to say it. But regardless, flowing locks of hair looked absolutely incredible. The graphics of this game I'm already sold on Kingdom Hearts 3. They don't need to keep showing it at every conference, but it looks incredible. Really cool to see they're going to have the Pirates of the Caribbean world in that, and I feel like Kingdom Hearts 3. Again, I wish it was making a December release date in 2018. Unfortunately, Square had to push it to 2019 in January, but we're getting it sometime in the next six months, and that's exciting. And when they finally gave us a look at Death Stranding, it just looks weird. Like, I know Hideo Kojima is kind of taking whatever kind of drugs are out there to make this game come to life, no pun intended, it looks really good. I mean, it, it, it's strange. They showed a trailer at last E3, a very brief look at it. They showed an extended cut trailer. I'd like to have a little bit more information by now as far as the gameplay and the storyline and what it's going to entail and when it's actually going to be releasing. I feel like just showing these teaser trailers is doing nothing except making me want it and not being able to get it, which I guess is kind of the point anyways. As far as how I felt overall about Sony's presentation and the games they presented, I thought they did an okay job. I'm going to be grading their performance as a solid B-. minus. There were so many great games, something for everyone, very exciting stuff coming down the pipeline, but the way they presented it kind of took all the air out of the room. It really just didn't excite me as much as it should have if they presented it the proper way. Now, if we're going to be comparing conferences on who presented the information the worst, I think Sony's in the running for that. They might even beat EA on how bad their conference was and how they went about presenting it. But if we look at it just for what it is and the games they presented, it really wasn't half bad. Anyways, that's how I felt about Sony's E3 2018 press conference. Let me know down in the comments below. Am I overrating it? Am I underrating it? Sony didn't really present anything special. Nothing that really wowed me outside of Resident Evil 2, and that's coming from Capcom. There was nothing from this presentation that was like a holy crap moment. It was just kind of like, okay, this is boring banjo music. On to the next game. All right, this is a weird transition where we're leaving this church area to this other place. Here's another game. All right, here's this weird, awkward conversation between a couple people. Here's another game. It was, it was a very poor-paced show, in my opinion. But I'd love to hear from you guys on what you thought about it. Let me know down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Smash, change, 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 change.